Were you surprised by what came out of the news conference with Chairman Powell? I was surprised by the extent to which he stressed patience in two ways. Patience with inflation running higher. He basically dismissed the fact that we've had some pretty surprising, hotter than expected inflation prints. And then the second patience with the balance sheet, saying, you know what, we may get there slower than we would have otherwise, which means that monetary policy is going to be more expansionary than it would have been otherwise. So I was struck that on, on the balance sheet, he took such a big step forward when he could have waited till the next meeting to do that. So we keep wondering what shoe is going to drop, right? We keep thinking everyone's bullish and then more bullish and then bullish on top of bull. And you have to wonder, OK, well, when does something break? And we were talking on Wednesday, it's the inflation expectations, that at some point this is going to be a higher, more inflationary environment with a Fed that is less willing to fight it. And yet I'm not seeing it in break-even rates. I'm not seeing it in other places that you normally would. Why do you think that is? You see it in gold. Look at the reaction of gold, record highs on gold. I think what you're having is, and, and you, you've all said it really well, the, over, the everything rally. So it's going everywhere. What's interesting now is this notion of market enthusiasm, not economic enthusiasm. There's a big difference. Market enthusiasm, uh, enthusiasm could spread to the rest of the world. And that is quite a consequential statement. If that occurs, then the U.S. relative strength is going to be somewhat diminished. I think it's actually too early to pivot. I, I do think that, to use your phrase, U.S. exceptionalism, economic exceptionalism, isn't going to expand to the rest of the world. The U.S. is really exceptional when it comes to its economy. The others aren't doing what the U.S. is doing in terms of investing in the future drivers of growth. They don't have the entrepreneurial society that we have. They don't have the mobility of factors of production that we have. The U.S. is truly exceptional among ad other advanced economies. So do you think it's rational for people to stay in the United States and to keep adding more, even if valuations are at such high levels relative to the rest of the world, to continue to kind of bet on this ship and not expect it to expand elsewhere? So I've been asked that question every single year for the last five years. And every single year, the U.S. premium has increased. And every single year, I said, don't fade the U.S. too early. I see some argument for diversifying away from the U.S., purely on this enthusiasm and on, on relative valuation, but I don't see it as strong. It is not being supported by fundamentals. People have to realize this. This is more betting on the momentum, and I understand that. The momentum factor is very strong right now.